Here we go. We are rolling now, right? Oh, We're good? God, I hope so. Okay. So, I want to share a success story with you guys. Um, Bob Dockrell from Canada wrote us an email the other day, and um, it was really, really cool. And I the, the biggest reason I want to share it with you, because it's such a great example of... Um, of uh, what can be done. So he said, um, can't believe I've been carving for over four years now, all inspired by the videos that you and your dad did. And of course, Vicky's expert video skills. <laughs> it took a while and a lot of wood before I finally got the hang of things. When I first started, one of the videos you gave, um, you gave a tutorial on marketing. Find your niche, you said. So I started looking around to see what other everybody else was doing and there were signs everywhere. What could I do that was different? One of my regulars asked for something completely custom. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with a computer, so I thought I'd give it a try. He wanted a custom carving of the doors. He provided the picture he wanted me to use. I did some tweaking and ended up with a carving. Attached are a few of the original photos converted to carving. With that said, I'm so busy that I started stopped taking orders for Christmas at the end of September. Wow. So, check this out. So, here's the, that's the photograph that his customer gave him. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. And this is the sign he made from it. Is that and stinking? What's his name? Uh, Bob Dockerel. He's up in Canada. Is that cool or what? So you want to talk about a niche. Let me show you one more. I don't normally show a lot of pictures. There's the photograph. And there's the carving. Is that crazy? That is just amazing to me. Anyway, um, that is a great example of finding a niche and rolling with it. And he stopped taking Christmas orders at the end of September. Yeah, September. Crazy. So, Bob, if you're watching this, congratulations, my friend. Um, super, super excited for you, man. And he sent me two or three other sets of photographs and pictures, and they were all just spectacular. So, um, you guys, find your niche. Man, that's a perfect example of finding a niche and rolling with it. Okay. Sound still good? I'm running out of... Yeah, I guess. All right. So let's get into... Um, let's get into the first question. So Mike says, uh, something has been bothering me is the spar urethane in the spray cans versus, versus the brush on from the quart can. Or I use a gallon can, but whatever. Like you, I like a bit of gloss. Well, I don't like a bit of gloss. I like a lot of gloss, but that's me. No matter how many coats I apply from the spray, it doesn't give me the gloss that one coat of brush gives me. So he's talking about spray can, which has got a really, really fine mist sprayer on it. And it is a good spray nozzle. There are some of these nozzles that I don't like, but this one I do actually. It's a really good nozzle. And then this is the liquid. The gallon can. I've hit that a few times with a hammer, if you can't tell. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, so. Awesome. Good job. Huh? Sorry, just got a message. Glad you got him, Tessa. Okay, so he says, has this been your experience? So what he's saying is he's not getting a, a heavy gloss. He's not getting a good gloss with a spray can, but he's getting a good gloss with a brush. So he says, has this been your experience? I don't have a critter gun yet. Um, does introducing air into the process from the aerosol can or the critter sprayer reduce the amount of gloss I might expect? So him not knowing what it was like to spray with a critter, he was thinking that even though it says gloss, this wasn't given uh, as much gloss. I know it seems like a silly question. I, um, I could just continue to paint on the spar with a brush, but I'm lazy and would like the easy and quick solution. If the critter sprayer delivers 
the same result to me that the aerosol can does, I might not want to use one. Any thoughts? So here's the deal. This, for me, one brush coat of this at, is probably equal to about 10 spray coats of this. It goes on such a fine mist. And I'm probably speaking to the choir here, but I answered his question by saying, no, the fact that it's aerosol has nothing to do with it not being gloss. You're just not getting enough buildup on there with this really fine mist nozzle as you do when you throw a coat on with the brush. What's the solution? That's the solution. So, it, it, you know, I, I, I tried to let him know that the air, it, it's not the fact that it's aerosol because this is a perfect example of the, of a, the cross between this and this. You, get a, you can get a heavy coat, a nice heavy, fine, uh, well, nice heavy coat without putting a, a, the brush on. Now, he can keep going with a brush, but I have some thoughts on that too. So this thing really is, and you guys, again, I'm preaching to the choir. Most of you probably already have one of these, but if you don't and you are trying to get a nice finish on your sign, this is the way to do it. It is certainly my favorite way to finish a sign. So um, in regards to brush coating, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not a professional finisher by any stretch of the imagination, but a lot of people don't realize when you go to finish a sign, if you're going to brush coat it on, you definitely, especially if you're using this helmsman, you definitely want to get a can of this and put one, at least one, if not two coats of this on before you brush, because if you don't, then what you you might be dragging some of that black out there, you know, background around outset letters or um, or the black from inset letters. If you're doing the same kinds of things that I do, <clears throat> spraying the primer, you definitely want to put a couple, at least one or two seal coats uh, with this on. Then put your brush coat on one or two brush coats till you get the buildup that you want, then lightly sand it. And I would lightly sand it in between coats anyway. Um, and then the last coat, I would put a nice, nice fine mist on with the spray can. This is very expensive. This is 10 bucks a can, and this is a lot cheaper way to go. Um, cheaper yet is using one of these. But if you guys haven't tried one of these, I want to strongly suggest that you give it a try if you have the advent of a compressor because this thing just works uh it's and it saves you tons of money all right it will go so much farther than brushing so it Tessa on says if you if you brush would you use a foam brush or a regular paint brush i'm not that crazy about the foam I'm brushes they, they tend to leave black specks on your stuff and the foam brush you got to remember if you're if you're finishing like a tabletop something that's flat all the way and doesn't have you know divots and grooves in it like a carved sign the foam brush might be fine but um that doesn't work well for getting your finish down in the groove uh i i like a bristle brush Ron Royan said, I just finished a project with Spar Gloss, wanted the high gloss finish and ended up with a matte finish. Hold on. Um, <clears throat> I think I had the pressure too high. Turned out okay, <clears throat> though. Really? That's interesting. Huh. Yeah, maybe you did have the pressure on too high and it, and it just, I don't know. I haven't run into that. I keep, when I, when I am, uh, of course, on this, uh, this is thicker than the, than the water bait. This is oil based. This is thicker than the czar that I use, the water based czar that I use. And uh, so you have to go a little bit more air pressure, maybe 60, 70 pounds uh, is what I found that works for this. So, um, but anyway, guys, you know, if you haven't got one of these, definitely do it. Um, they're on Amazon. I know for a while they were having a tough time. People were having a tough time finding them or they were selling them in pairs or whatever, but uh, they're definitely well worth the money. All right, next, 
Uh, this one's really quick. I noticed that the wood doesn't seem to, uh, that you use isn't clamped down when you work. What do you, uh, keep the wood from moving around? How do you keep the mo wood from moving around? So you guys know, and I showed this on Monday's video, I think this is the mat that I've been using for years. And now I have a kind of an upgraded version. What do I do with those pictures? Oh, there they are. So this is the, this product is the mod box professional toolbox liner. And, uh, I think we've got this in our Amazon store and now, um, I got an upgraded version. You can see, and again, I showed this on Monday's YouTube video, but you guys might not have seen it. It's pretty thin. I can't remember how thin it is. Uh, it doesn't say right there, but it's like maybe a 16th, a 32nd, a 16th. But this is the upgraded, well, I like it better. This is an upgraded version. Look how thick that is. That is just really, really cool. And I've got this on both my benches now, and I really like this stuff. The, the price on them are about the same. It could be that this isn't as long as this one for obvious reasons because it's not as thick. But um, they're both somewhere uh, around $35, $30, dollars mark. Um uh, but if you guys are looking for a non-skid mat, this uh, professional toolbox liner, uh, and here's, I think this is the label. This is the label for, they call it the fat liner. This is the, uh, this is the heavy one here. And I really recommend it. I really, really like it. I, I think it's quite a bit better than the thin one. They both work great. But um, the more I use the fat, the fat version, I really, really like it. So that was uh, real quick. And again, I think uh, I know the fat one for sure is in uh, the Amazon store. And I'm not the thin one may be in there, too. But I would definitely go with the fat one if I was if I was you. All right. Uh, next. Let's see. Sign carvers of the day. Let's get after it. Let's do it. So I guess the sound is still good. Good. Somebody heard me curse. Somebody heard you curse. Hmm. It couldn't have been you. No, it was somebody. In 40 years, I don't know if I've heard you curse. <laughs> I've seen you do that before. <laughs> Who you guys could have seen that? <laughs> uh, Paul Heelman. <laughs> for a friend that has uh, a heart for missionaries. So took our little, uh, our little logo that you came up with and, uh, made a neat little sign. How That's cool, cool is that? That's very cool. I like it. Michael Pat. So this is his 15th sign. That's really good. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Dan said I'm a saint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Dan. Uh, that is uh, some real. That's a lot of really straight lines there. That is really impressive for a fifteenth sign, Michael. I really like it. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know what size it is. It didn't say. Bert Graham. I talked to Bert yesterday. Maybe today even. I think you did talk to him. Today. Did I? Uh, Eleven by twenty-four raw edge live edge cedar slab Bert is really he's up in Canada and he has uh, access to a lot of live edge cedar I'm jealous anyway great job Bert as always buddy good work buddy Mike Kingston I'm not moving fast enough uh, so this is interesting I don't know if you can tell this is a combination of a sign and a gun rack which I think yeah, is, I think is a really cool idea. It's a little nut, but that's all right. Frank says my favorite Canuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, a combination sign and gun rack or a customized gun rack, I guess. Really cool. Great idea for Christmas, Mike. Tessa, some chick named Tessa. Tessa. Look at that. Look at that. Tessa. Gosh, you're doing some great stuff, chick. Very, very nice. I love it. Beautiful cedar boards. 
Nice finish. Great job, Tessa. Thomas Gent. He's here too, I think. Is he? This is nine and a half by 30. I really like that shape. That's think, really clever, the... Um, the uh, Location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't... Uh, what do they call that? What do they call that? La latitude and longitude yeah, kind of, of location, yeah. Yeah, it is very clever. I really like Tessa that. Asked a question. Uh, hold on. Has anyone heard of any of? Has anyone heard of Amazon Monkey Board? No. Nope. Amazon Monkey Is Board. Is that a kind of board? Wood? No, I I don't know. I haven't heard of that. But we probably will. Bob Cowan, eighteen inch round. This is for a retired submarine chief. Uh, used our flag template and letters and inlaid the patch at the bottom. So that's not carved, but it's inlaid where he carved a cavity and set that in there. That really is cool looking, Bob. Love it. Great job. Love that. Roy Smith. This one's cool. Yeah, so, that's a pretty good tune, though. Yeah, it is, huh? He did a great job on it. 12 by 18. Made for his lumber supplier, used a profile bit and uh, put a resin finish on it. That really is a beautiful board. Looks like maple or something. I can't tell what kind, but it's obviously laminated. But um, very nice job. Nice detail on that chain. Chainsaw. Andy Earl. So this one's cool. And this one will sound familiar to Vicky. This is uh, the Punisher's which is a law enforcement motorcycle club. Um, he donated this for an auction, uh, American Legion, and um, the, the auction went to uh, people that were hurt by the, hur the latest hurricanes, and Andy matched the bid for the donation. That's awesome. So isn't that gorgeous? Andy, you're doing some beautiful stuff, buddy. So, uh, we've heard of the Punisher's uh, mm -hmm. Motorcycle Club. And last but not least, now this guy, um, I'm not even sure exactly how to pronounce his name. Lejubo? I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, he is He's in Montenegro, which is over in Europe. He and his family have a small winery where they make wine in the old tradition ways. And um, they have people from all over, all over the world that come and visit their winery. Hmm. And uh, I went through their Facebook page and there's tons of pictures and videos and showing them making the wine and people that were visiting from Russia and different places all over the world. And uh, he started making signs because he needed them for around the winery. And the funny thing is his grandfather was an American citizen and uh, worked in Montana as a uh, as a miner and a police officer at one point, even though he's from Montenegro. Um, their their website and their Facebook page is just so cool. It's such a great story. Anyway, he's been uh, making signs for a little while and doing a great job. So uh, thank you, my friend. And I'm proud to show this off for you. Great job. So he had some questions I think I answered uh, that I was helping him with. But um, terrific group of SCOTDs, guys. Great job. So um, the Christmas exchange, remember, we got like one more day. So we've got, uh, we've got a bunch of names in the hat. And uh, we want to get some more in there. So... If you guys aren't part of the Christmas exchange um, and you want to be, it's basically where you're going to be teamed up with somebody else. From the Minions Facebook Yeah, from the Minions Facebook group. You're going to be teamed up with somebody else and then you guys are going to make Christmas gifts signs for each other. If you have any uh, questions on it, email vickywithdavesigns at gmail.com. And I think it's going to be fun. We've got, uh, I don't know, we're pushing 20 in there, something like that. So we'd love to have a few more. problems with the things stalling. Uh-oh. Sorry, like, guys. It's that's like buffering. That's, 
Yeah, it's YouTube. That's not. Yeah, it, uh, you know it. Well, Facebook. It's not YouTube oh, it's tonight. Facebook. Yeah. Well, but it might be the internet. I don't know. It might be our video internet. Video issues. Video issues. Yeah. So Sorry, let's... guys. All right, guys. We're out of here. So be sure and email Vicky if you want to be part of that uh, Christmas exchange. We'll be doing the drawing and pairing people up on Saturday. So we'll be posting this later on. But um, anyway, guys, sorry for the issues. Hope you guys are all doing well. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow night over on YouTube Live. So uh, we'll be making an announcement earlier. And we'll see you over there tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.